standing in a tornado, and other distractions. This else is revealed in a personal experience of mine. The human creature, in spite of its enormous brain power, can often glitch just a bit. For example, looking for your car keys and realizing they're in your hand. Or the moment you walk into a grocery store and you forget what you were planning to get. Some street hustlers and politicians use this tendency we have to hyper-focus on one thing to cause us to miss something else. Like a pickpocket team. While one bumps the mark on the front, the other one just lifts the wallet. And Mark doesn't have a clue that soon they'll be canceling all their credit cards. Or sometimes, there is the one who is in, head over heels, in so much they can't see that the other is just not that into them. Everyone else can see it. How'd they miss it? And there are times when distractions grab us, and when we miss something critical, it can be a genuine problem. Back in the day, as an old retired aircraft firefighter, I can share with you that in years past, for training and practice, we used to use a shallow but rather wide circular pit. And this pit was then filled with liquid fuels like jet fuel. These were really hot fires. Without protective clothing, you'd want to be back 50 to 100 feet to be comfortable. The bright orange flames could go a good hundred feet or more into the air with lots of black smoke building up and they would even produce their own weather. Because of the heat of the burning fuels and the cooler air, we usually always got spectacular fire tornadoes. The industry rightly stopped using such techniques for training many years ago, but uh, I digress. Progress but we still got tornadoes. The state of the art for simulated realism now are propane fired systems with burner nozzles and heat sensors. They work a little like an oversized backyard barbecue grill. They're built with a grid of burners and sensors covering a few thousand square feet. The system also has a control tower to overlook the entire simulator. From there, different patterns and difficulty of extinguishment are programmed into the burner grid and the fuel is ignited. And there is, in the tower, a big red all-stop button to shut everything down within three or four seconds if needed. Unlike the old pit fire technique of the past, there was not as much smoke. Like the old fire pit, we still got lots of heat. We even got a few fire tornadoes. This astonishing phenomenon would appear within the mass of the inferno. Swirling, the fire would powerfully roar up a hundred feet or more into the sky. Unfortunately, with this giant gas grill, there could often be a little surprise. In places where the fire had stopped burning, unburned propane gas could percolate below the surface and travel through the gravel and pop back up several yards from the fire, then ignite on the still superheated rocks and just swirl a pillar of flame into the heavens in a whirlwind. And after a minute or so, this rogue twister burned out by itself, or someone put it out. Doused just in time. As a firefighter at the airport's authority in D.C., I got the chance to help train some of my peers from a neighboring jurisdiction. These crews didn't have much experience with really large flammable liquids fires, like jet fuels. Such a fire was a marked departure from the house and other structure fires that they usually dealt with. Their job, in a three-person team, to discharge water which the simulator would interpret as foam, through a handheld hose line and a nozzle, and then put out the fire as they dragged everything forward further into the simulator. If the work was done correctly, 
the fire would recede and eventually go out. But you really had to work at it. As we began and they advanced, I was a bit in front of the hose line crew and to their left. I was watching and urging them on when one of those rogue fire natos burst up engulfing my entire left side. Probably should have been startled and moved, but I didn't see it or really even feel it. I kind of remember hearing it whoosh and then noticed that my left side started getting a little warmer. But other than that, I was completely clueless. I felt no sense of danger. My face was turned away from this explosion looking to the right, watching the crew advancing the hose line. And one's field of vision is not that wide when wearing an SCBA face piece. I recall a lot of unintelligible yelling over the radio. Didn't make sense, so I ignored it. Then I was surprised and befuddled when I realized my team was turning the stream of high-pressure water on me. What the heck, I thought. Is this some kind of joke? Thankfully, the firefighter in control of the nozzle adjusted the water stream into a bit of a fan shape instead of continuing a very hard-hitting straight stream which would have promptly put me flat on my butt. But then, standing there confused in a deluge of water, the left side of the lens of my face piece began to craze, a common reaction when solids, having been super hot, are instantly cooled. And moments later, the entire raging training fire went out, thanks to that red all stop button in the control tower. I really didn't comprehend what was happening to me. I felt a little threatened and confused by getting hosed down and put out. Once I understood, I was grateful. Fortunately, due to the amazing technology and protective gear, an attentive observer in the tower and a quick-acting hose team, I was fine. A little bewildered, with mild first-degree burns on the left side of my neck and face, but fine. My protective gear, however, was another story. The extraordinary heat and fire-resistant materials had begun to turn black and contract. The reflective surfaces had burned completely off where they were in contact with my little pet fire needle. It, my breathing air face piece had lots of tiny little cracks on the left side. A few seconds more, and I expect the formerly crystal-clear lens would have been done. As a quick aside, those of you who have spouses and loved ones working in dangerous jobs, maybe now you know why sometimes they don't talk about everything that happens. I told my wife this story for the first time just a few days ago, after 15 years had passed. And she said, that's frightening. It's good you didn't say anything when it happened. You wouldn't have been allowed to go back to work. <laughs> well, just as with any tale, there are many little outsized nuggets of wisdom to be uncovered here. But for now, might I suggest just this one? Here's an ounce from our little story about being oblivious to the obvious fire tornado and the other important things that we might be blind to or distracted from. Having established the fact that obvious events can be occurring that we are completely blind to. It's important and comforting to have someone watching your back. Someone who is willing and able to frustrate and confuse you and to yank you out of the fire you don't know you're in. Thanks, guys. And that's it. An ounce submitted for your consideration. Thanks for watching and hopefully enjoying this little story. We've got lots of others, so why don't you subscribe, like, hit the notification bell. Hey, it helps us get a little more attention so we can share this with even more people. And we appreciate it. Thanks. Thanks.